say. Road trip today, we're gonna go up into Guadalajara to Costco and Home Depot. Gonna take you along for the ride. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. I did this video a couple years ago with a trip up to Costco into Guadalajara, but things have changed and one of them is that the roads have been redone. Isn't this road beautiful? After spending seven months in the United States, I can tell you that road was beautiful. By comparison, no longer is it good to say that the roads in Mexico are worse than the roads in the United States. The United States infrastructure is bad. Don't give me any grief about passing on a double yellow. Um, this is Mexico. This is Jocotepec, and this is the Jocotepec Libramento. It's the bypass, so you don't have to go through the city of Jocotepec. This is the other end of the Jocotepec bypass, and we are now getting on to Highway 15. We're going towards Guadalajara, but back the other way, and back of us is the south side of Lake Chapala, and that's how you would get to several of the places over there, including up into the El Tigre Mountains to Mazamitla. Build, I should say hyped, as the Switzerland of Mexico. Little bull ring off here to the right. We went there uh, 20 years ago and saw a bull riding contest. They don't fight bulls anywhere anymore in Mexico. They just ride them. Well, sometimes they ride them. Guy fell off and laid out behind the grandstand for about half an hour before the ambulance got there to take care of him. And by the time it got there, there was a second guy that got gored and was laying out there moaning and groaning until the ambulance got there. That was the little town of Molina, which is kind of a bump in the road. Literally, it's a bump in the road. It's a huge, big topi speed bump. Big orphanage off to the right here. A lot of uh, we expats support orphanages here in Mexico. And now we're on to the autopista. Um, the autopista runs this part of it from the coast down by Manzanillo, all the way up here to Guadalajara and keeps on going to Tepic and to Mazatlan and all the way up to Nogales. The autopista, I think it's called 15D. A lot of tunnels here in Guadalajara. We've gotten off on the exit to Mega, which is a huge, big grocery store here. Nice, modern, huge grocery store. And uh, it's a right turn down here into Costco. Membership in Costco here is about uh, 400 pesos, which is like $20, so it's cheaper to belong in Mexico, and my card works up in the States just as well. Good looking watermelons there. Going to pick up some hamburger here. Um, hamburger is about $3.50 a pound. I like to get it up here, it's good, it's ground fine instead of some of the coarse stuff you might get in a local market there in uh, Ahihik. We get our sandwich stuff here like uh, salami and cooked ham. That's salami I'm throwing in the cart there. Kind of like Italian Genoa salami. Regular kind of stuff you get at Costco in the States. As a matter of fact, if you didn't see prices in pesos and names on packages in Spanish, you wouldn't know you were in a Costco as opposed to 
a Costco in the United States. Cheese. Takes me a long time to use this much cheese, but you can get it at uh, the North Shore of Lake Chapala at Super Lake, but it's like twice the price for um, what it is up here at Costco. And it's the same thing. They buy it at Costco and double the price and put it in Super Lake down there in San Antonio Tlacopan. I don't do a list. I just go up and down every aisle because I'm retired. I don't have any time limit here. Although Lynn is waiting in the van. Lynn can't walk well enough to come in here and she doesn't like riding one of those carts. She says it's embarrassing. I was checking for some meds here. We get most of Lynn's meds at uh, IMSS in Mexico, but because of COVID, they've been out of some of them. Hi friends. Well, what did we have in the cart? First of all, I'm going to ask you not to judge my diet or my eating habits by what you see in this cart. Going to Costco is to get special stuff. We eat a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables in Mexico. For those of you who don't understand kilos and pesos, I've spent about an hour doing math homework to convert the kilos and pesos is into dollars and pounds. And for those of you who do understand kilos and pesos, here's a picture of the receipt. But uh, let's get at it and see what the math tells us about prices of things at Costco in Mexico. Going to start with the most expensive thing in the cart, a single thing, 357 pesos. But by the pound, 275 a pound for frozen chicken breasts, um, no bones, no skin, no antibiotics, good stuff. That's five pounds. More chicken, nice white chicken breast meat. These are the big uh, three quarter pound cans, six to a pack. $1.86 a can, good for chicken salad. Philadelphia cream cheese, eight to the big pack there, $1.26 a pack. Uh, two to a regular sized graham cracker crust, so I can make four cheesecakes with that pack. Okay, don't give me crap about my health and cheesecake. Uh, almonds. I eat a handful of these a day for my general health, Four eighty-eight a pound. Uh-oh, back to the health questions. Uh, we use pecans for cookies and cinnamon rolls, Five eighty-five a pound. Italian salami, Four twenty-three a pound. And uh, cooked ham, Three fifty-five a pound. Usually what I make a sandwich out of is this, the salami, and hot mustard. This is a package of corned beef, and um, I was a little shocked myself when I saw a 9.53 a pound after I calculated it. Uh, just a special treat, impulse buy. Probably won't be buying that on a regular basis. Pork tenderloin, great on the barbecue. I spice it, marinate it, and wrap it in saran wrap and let it sit for a day before I barbecue it. Yum. Already cooked bacon, $16.10 a pound. Sounds expensive, except when you cook out three-fourths of the weight when you before you eat it, um, it comes out to about $4 a pound by comparison to uncooked bacon. The other thing is that you do need some bacon grease occasionally, like if, shout out to Rossi Poo, hey, you're going to cook your popcorn over a campfire with your bacon grease, but that might be another video uh, when I get back to the States in my motorhome. 
And speaking of motorhome and camping, if you're living in a van, or even if you're living in a 40-foot diesel pusher luxury motorhome, having already cooked bacon and not dealing with bacon grease is a plus. I do also buy uncooked bacon because you do need a little bacon grease in the refrigerator. Every once in a while, you got to saute something in bacon grease. And hey, what's life without bacon? And finally, Kleenex, $1.26 a box. It's not about the price. It's about the quality and the convenience of getting a bunch of it at the same time at Costco. And if you have to worry about the price of Kleenex, you probably shouldn't be shopping at Costco in Mexico anyway. Costco is not where people on a budget shop in Mexico. You heard the guy talking to me. Guys help you park and back out of your parking space. And it's customary to give them a little tip, a few pesos just for their help. You'll find them in every parking lot, even little mom and pop grocery stores. Not just in the big ones. I'm doing a voiceover here, and I don't know if you could hear what I actually said, but I said that guy was lollygagging. He was just going too darn slow for the rest of the traffic. So I passed him. Here we're pulling into the Home Depot parking lot, and this push the button, wait for the thing to go up is new. Uh, frankly, I don't get it. It doesn't really make any sense to me. It's just a stick. You could drive through the stick. I mean, if you rob the place and was driving away, that stick ain't stopping you. Going to go down here in the tool and home and garden department and get some new hoses. The gardener tells me that he needs new hoses and he's got specific requirements. He wants big three quarter inch and a hundred footers and he wants two of them. Those are too small. Those are too short. And those are too much money, but that's what he wants. So that's what we're going to get him. Two of those big long ones. They're 82 foot long and three quarter inch hoses. I guess the money's not too bad. They're about $40 a piece. So that's $80 worth of hoses. But he does a great job. My yard always looks nice. And I haven't mowed the lawn, and I have a half acre of grass. I haven't mowed the lawn for 20 years. I'm going to stop here and get me a table. I'm going to clean out a place at home. And it's um, old wooden workbenches that have rotted, and I'm going to throw them away or burn them or something. And I bought this new table and see how it works. I may buy a second one so that I've got a right angle workbench. Anyway, Home Depot. Got to stop here and get some toilet parts. They seem to be having toilet issues. A couple of valves and floats there on top of the table I'm buying. The hoses are underneath. Once again, there's a guy helping me here. And the stick that wouldn't stop me if I was trying to get away. We're going to uh, take a left here, and that's Carl's Jr. right there. Uh, we had lunch there, and I highly recommend the new Angus Steak Burger. It was excellent. And what do we have here? Another stick. I think somebody's brother-in-law owns the stick sales department. 
Well, we're on our way home. Uh, this is 15D, a lot of trucking uh, goes up and down this highway. And we're getting off of the autopista onto the highway that goes back home. I paused the video here so that you can get a really good look at this pedestrian overpass. These things are all over Mexico, and they just don't make any sense to me. Well, I was joking about somebody's brother-in-law has the contract for something. Yeah, I think that's the case with these things. Look at that. Okay, are you going to walk 20 feet across the road, or are you going to go a mile up and back and over and back and down? Yeah, nobody is ever using them. Back through Molino, the bump in the road, literally a bump in the road. Oh, am I repeating myself? <laughs> I just, I know I am. I just like the joke. Molino, a bump in the road. And on to the Hokotepec. Libramento, or the Hokotepec Bypass. This bypass hasn't always been here, um, maybe about four or five years, and it saves about sometimes 30 minutes. And this is the carretera, Hokotepec to Chapala. We're just on the edge of Hokotepec. This is El Chante. This is San Juan Cosala. We're about six kilometers from home, Ahihik. There's the one stoplight between Hokotepec and Ahihik. And I'm home. I have to stop with my van, back up, and turn a second time in order to make it past the avocado tree. Don't have to do that with the car, but the van just can't make the turn. It works. I get used to it. like me give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next please share me with your friends on social media thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today